grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Mi Rang Baek. I am senior pastor here at Ginto Park United Methodist Church. We welcome all of you worshiping with us on YouTube and Facebook today. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Instagram. Also, please visit our website, www.gintopark.umc.org. And please give, continue to give your tithes and offerings through our website. Friends, today is Trinity Sunday and the first Sunday uh, after Pentecost. Trinity Sunday celebrates our tri triune God, the three persons of God, the Father, the Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Sustainer. We also celebrate this Sunday as Peace with Justice Sunday and Graduation Recognition Sunday. We are celebrating a lot of things. Let us center and prepare ourselves for worship.
for a call to worship. How shall we describe the concept of Trinity? In the first person, we find God the creator. In the second person, we discover Jesus the redeemer. In the third person, we greet the Holy Spirit, the guardian and guide. There are so many ways to describe the work and witness of God, the Trinity, helps us to understand the nature of God. Amen. you to share your joys and concerns coming down below. We want to pray and celebrate with you. Let us pray. God of creation, Jesus Redeemer, Holy Spirit who guides and sustains us, hear our prayers this day. We know the many ways in which we have failed to do the tasks which you have set before us. We have often chosen our comfort over service to you. Our fears and doubts lay claim to our lives and we, sh we shrink from the opportunities you give to us. Forgive us for the many fa failings 
lift and restore us to your grace. Put our feet on the pathways of service, offering justice and peace to all people. Heal us, O gracious one. Lord of holy mysteries, we admit that sometimes we are confused by the concept of the Trinity. We can speak the words of three in one, but our minds are, are boggled and confused. You are so great and your work is so awesome that we try to find ways to express your work and witness it in our lives. From before the beginning of time, you offered love and cre creative wisdom as you created all that is. In the person and ministry of Jesus, you taught us more clearly about your nature and love and gave us ways that we should live peacefully together. The Holy Spirit is offered as our guardian and guide faithfully with us, with us all our days. Full and complete is your love for us, your creation. Help us again to be more faithful to you. Give us opportunities to witness and serve. Heal and restore us as we continue to pray, O gracious one, in which Jesus taught his disciples. Lead us to participate in the mystery of the triune God. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our, our, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture today is John sixteen twelve through 15 I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The scripture reading for today is Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Not only that, but we also boast in our affection, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces characters, and character produces hope. And hope does not push us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. Loving friends in Christ, by the church liturgical year calendar, last Sunday we had Pentecost. This Sunday is Trinity Sunday. Before Pentecost Sunday, we lived in the season of Advent Christmas, Epiphany, Baptismal Sunday, Ash Wednesday, and the Lenten season, and Easter Sunday, and the season, season of Easter. All these are based on Jesus' coming, his life, death, and his resurrection. Jesus Christ is still central to our faith and our spiritual journey. The name Christian means a little Christ. Through the Advent and Christmas season, we learn and experience God who is with us. Through Lent and the season of Easter, we learn and experience God who is for us. And on Pentecost Sunday teaches us, I mean, Pentecost Sunday teaches us about God who is in us. The three ways of God guide us to see the nature of the triune God. Trinity means one nature in three persons. It never means that there are three different gods. 
We believe that God who created the universe and worked for Israel in the Old Testament is the same God who sent Jesus into the world and let all the, all the universe know God's saving love in and through Jesus Christ. Also, we all believe that the Spirit was poured upon Jesus, followers, and their faith communities from God, the Creator, through Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, and the Spirit began to sustain the life of the church and Christian living ways. The Spirit is not separated from God, the Creator, and Jesus, the Redeemer. God, the Creator, and Jesus, the Redeemer, also coexist and cooperate in the Spirit. The same Spirit has been um, descended upon us from the Father through the Son. This is a general way to describe the Trinity, but it does not um, presuppose that the Father is superior to the Son or the Spirit and the Spirit and that the Son is, um, I mean, the Father is superior uh, to the Son or the Spirit, and that the Son is superior to the Spirit or the Father. The early church Christians were people who experienced God through Jesus, his, his entire life, and through the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised to them as he left the earth. They became aware that God was with them, God was for them, and God was in them. Through God, with them, for them, and in them, they experienced the nature of the triune God, which was love. Friends in Christ, love is the image of God. Love is the nature of God, and that is who we are. Therefore, unless we say love, and unless we do love, we are nothing. We are non-beings without love. If a church has no love, that church is dead. If a Christian does not live in and buy love, the, that person is not Christian. To love means to commit your life to love every living being. The scripture teaches us that the most important law is love God and love neighbors. God is the living being and your neighbors are too. Again, love is to commit yourself to love every living being as yourself. Friends, we believe that we have belonged to the Holy Church in the Holy Spirit who is uniting all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son. It means that we are called to see our, ourselves in, in the light of the communion or community of the triune God. We may call and understand the triune God in many names. It may have been one of the most familiar names to call the Trinity the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. However, when we take an understanding of the tr Trinity through uh, through the three names, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we should not stay with, with uh, the idea of muscul musculin masculinity. Instead, we should pay much more attention to look at each one's role and relationship among them. We understand the Trinity in the light of love. As a personal God, God is relational. God is love, as the epistle um, of John tells us. And that, love is, and, and that love is shared in the divine community of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Indeed, through love, God reaches out to the creation and calls it back into the relationship to, through the redeeming work of Jesus Christ by the transform, transformational work of the Holy Spirit. So God the Father is love. Jesus Christ the Son is the beloved one. And the Holy Spirit ties the Father and the Son in one spirit, which is love. It is divine communion and community of the Trinity. 
This understanding may allow us to call God the mother, Jesus the beloved child, and the Holy Spirit the uniting power of love. Somebody may call God the father while somebody may call God the mother. The key point as we understand the Trinity is to see an intimate relationship among three persons in one substance, which is love. Therefore, when we confess that we believe in the triune God, it means that we believe in the God of love creating us in the image of God, redeeming us by Jesus' sacrificial love on the cross, and guiding and uniting us all in the power and presence of the spirit of love. Loving siblings in the triune God. I'm sorry. Loving siblings in the triune God. Each one of you has been accepted as beloved sons and daughters of God's love. In the name of Jesus Christ, the beloved one, and the lover by the Holy Spirit. We all together belong to the communion of the triune God, namely the divine community of the Trinity. In other words, we all are a fam family of God. It is our spiritual and physical reality in this world. However, we know that we as a family of God may experience conflict and division and severe brokenness if we do, do not stay with the love of God. And as we do not stay with the love of God always, it is very crucial to respect each other in love and to continue to seek the fountain of love develop a flow of love, and show the action of love. A church needs many prayers seeking the fountain of love. It needs, not, it, is, it needs not only participants and programs to develop a flow, flow of love inside and outside of the church, but also to bring love to all people, especially those in need. In this way of creating the pathways of love, we should be humble always before God, the holy mystery, creating us, redeeming us, and sustaining us. In Psalm 8, we can discover who we are before God, um, the holy mystery. The psalmist tells the truth via very beautiful words. When I look, at, look up at your skies, at, at what your fingers made, the moon, and the stars that you set firmly in place. What are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet, all sheep and all cattle, wild animals too the birds in the sky, the fish of the, of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. Friends, primarily we are not living in a mono-ethnic or monocultural world. We are living with other lives like other human beings, animals, and plants, and trees, we are living in the earth and the sea. All things in the world with us may be clues to invite us to find the triune God. When we try to understand God the Trinity, we should deeply reflect and confidently explore about three persons in one substance. Somebody may prefer to use the traditional form of the Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but someone may try to explore new meta metaphors, for instance, mother, lover, and friend, or fountain, stream, and love, and river. I think that traditional ways and new ways both are enough to reveal the communion of the God of love, or the fellowship of the God of life. At the same time, we should find our beings in and through the triune God because we believe 
that God is the creator, the redeemer, and the guardian. Our understanding of the Trinity is also connected to who we are as the church, Christ's body. I do not believe that God has age, skin color, gender, or sexuality like us human beings. God has many names. It means that God has been named in many ways by humans. Hinduism understands that God's their God has more than 100 names. Perhaps Christianity also has God's names and images as much as Hindus have. Although we may call God many names, all Christians may agree that God is love and God is the life giver. And we may find ourselves in this agreeable understanding of God. God's love is caring and life giving. The love of God as care and life giving, I mean, as caring and life giving, is embodied through Jesus' entire life. Jesus was willing to be a friend of sinners. He proclaimed the kingdom of God to those who were in all areas and all corners. For Jesus, God's love as care and life giving was not different from doing justice or making peace in this world where God created. He was always truly honest to God, the life giver. He never lived for his individual needs, but for God's demands. He was born and raised as a male and as a Jew in Judaism. However, he broke boundaries in culture, gender, and faith type and called all people into the kingdom of God. He faced criticism and life-threatening circumstances so many times by the opposites who were powerful. However, he was willing to take the way of suffering and death to let all people know God's love. The love of God as care and life-giving that is embodied in Jesus is not something that looks romantic or charming, but something that looks bloody, radical, and revolutionary. For Jesus, caring for others and embodying life-giving means that he becomes nothing while God becomes everything. Today, we also remember peace and justice as we observe another peace with Justice Sunday. We knew that Jesus calls us to give water to those who are thirsty, provide food to those who are hungry, give clothes to those who are naked, proclaim, do, I mean, proclaim freedom and liberty to those who are captive, and rejoice with those who are rejoicing and weep with those who are weeping. Jesus is persecuted and arrested and beaten and tortured and crucified by all those who are opposed to these ministries of Jesus. Jesus is a spiritual filled one. That is, he is the love filled being as God is love. It is the ground of our being and the, uh, the purpose of our life. It is the way to save us. The communion of Trinity calls us, all Christians, to look at human beings, nature, and global and local issues in the light of God, of love, as care and life-giving, rather than our human sight. The triune God invites us to see them intentionally in the view of God's love. Let's remember that God is the community of three persons, Today, the communion of God calls us Christians to have unlimited responsibilities to, I mean, responsibilities in God's grace for making this world a better place through the love of God. With us, God. For us, God. In us. May the triune God, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer be with you now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.
friends, receive the benediction. May the love of God, the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer, rest upon you and live through you this day and always. So now go in peace with the Triune God.